solve the system using matrices. x minus 4y plus 4z equals negative 1 is our first equation. 2x minus y plus 5z equals 6 is our second equation. And negative x plus 3y minus z equals 5 is our third equation. We're going to set up the matrix where we're going to have our coefficients 1 minus 4, 4, separated from our results of negative 1 in our first equation in each row. So our second row will be 2 minus 1, 5, and a 6. And our third row will be negative 1, 3, negative 1, and a 5 in our third row. Notice that we're going to have, as in our upper left-hand corner, already a value of 1. That's what we want to look for. We want to end up with 1's along our diagonal, and we want to have the lower portion here all zeros below the diagonal. So we've already got our first row as we want it. So let's go ahead and rewrite the matrix with 1 minus 4, 4, separated with a minus 1. Then we notice that our third equation has a negative 1 in it. If I take the first equation, that is first row, and add it to our third row, we can end up replacing our third row with that result. So what we're going to end up with here is going to be row 1 plus row 3. We'll put it into our row 3. So we'll have neg 1 minus 1, which is going to be a 0. We'll have negative 4 plus 3, which is going to be a negative 1. We're going to have 4 minus 1, which is going to be a positive 3. And we're going to have negative 1 plus 5, which is 4. Next note that we can take our second row, and if we multiply our first row by negative 2 and add that to our second row, we can replace our second row. So this entry is going to end up being our row 1 multiplied by negative 2 plus row 2. We'll put it into our row 2. That means we'll have 1 times negative 2, which is going to be negative 2, plus 2, which is 0. We'll have negative 4 times negative 2, which is 8. 8 minus 1 is going to be 7. We're going to have negative 2 times 4, which is negative 8, plus 5, which is negative 3. We'll have negative 1 times negative 2, which is 2, plus 6, which is going to give us a value of 8. Now, one thing is, remember that what we want are 1's along the diagonal. I notice that in row 3 right now, I have a negative 1. I can always interchange rows. That is, I can take what is now row 3 and move it into row 2, and vice versa. Take row 2 and move it into row 3. At the same time that I'm doing that, I'm going to note that I can go ahead and multiply this row by negative 1 in order to make this value a positive 1. So we're going to rewrite this matrix as follows. We're going to leave our first row as is. It'll be 1 minus 4, 4. We have our dash line and we have our negative 1. We're going to take row 3, move it into row 2, and at the same time change its sign. So we're going to have our negative row 3, and that's going to be moved into row 2. That's going to give us a 0, a positive 1, a negative 3, and a negative 4. Let's go ahead and just write down our second row into the row 3 position now. We're going to have our 0, a 7, a negative 3, and an 8. Now, we're almost where we need to be. That is, we want to end up with a 0 in this second entry on our third row and we want to have a 1 here. Let's start off by getting this to equal a 0. And we can accomplish this by taking our values in row 2, multiplying times negative 7, and adding that to row 3, so that these two values, when I multiply by negative 7, will end up giving us a 0 in this spot. That is, what we're going to do is take negative 7, multiplied times row 2, and add it to row 3, and that will be in our third row. So we're going to rewrite our first two rows. 1, negative 4, 4, and our negative 1. We'll have our 0, 1, negative 3, and negative 4. And now we're going to do this operation. 
When we multiply negative 7 times 0 and add it to 0, we end up with 0. Negative 7 times 1 added to 7 is going to end up giving us a value of 0, which was what was needed. Negative 7 multiplied times negative 3 is going to be 21, and then we're going to add to that a negative 3. That's going to give us a value of 18. Negative 7 times negative 4 is 28. Add that to our value of 8 to give us 36. Finally, we're going to have our row reduced format if we notice that in our last row we can divide everything by 18. That is, we're going to take 1 18th times row 3 and put it into our matrix. So we're going to have our 1, negative 4, 4, and our negative 1. We'll have 0, 1, negative 3, negative 4, and we're going to take everything here and multiplying by 1 18th is the same as dividing by 18, so 0 divided by 18 is 0, 0 divided by 18 is 0, 18 divided by 18 is 1, and 36 divided by 18 is 2. So now we're going to take the results of our matrix and put it, the variables back into play. We can start with our bottom row. That's going to read 1 times z equals 2. So in other words, we have that z equals 2. In our second equation, we're going to have, remember this is our y value, so we'll have 1y minus 3z equals negative 4. Replacing our z value with what is given as our 2, we'll have y minus 3 times 2, which is 6, equals negative 4. We can add 6 to both sides of the equation to come up with y equals 2. Going now to our top equation, we're going to read off using variables x minus 4y plus 4z equals negative 1. And replacing with the values that we've come up with, z equals 2 and so does y, we'll have x minus 4 times 2, which is 8, plus 4 times 2, which is 8 equals negative 1, so that gives us that x equals negative 1. Now this is going to give us an ordered triple. We have our x value as negative 1, our y value as 2, and our z value as 2, and that ordered triple will be the solution set.